can pick up stuff. I can throw a ball and I can throw a bed. Holding up remarkable medical devices like a prosthetic hand, artificial knees, and perfectly formed skull bones generated by 3D printers as examples of her agency's oversight responsibilities. Food and Drug Administration Commissioner Dr. Margaret Hamburg recently spoke to the assembled biomedical students at Bladensburg High School who could one day be working for the FDA themselves. Dr. Hamburg earned her MD from Harvard Medical School and completed her residency at what is now New York Presbyterian Hospital Weill Cornell Medical Center. She conducted neuroscience research at Rockefeller University in New York and at the National Institute of Mental Health and later focused on AIDS research as assistant director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. I was very fortunate in many ways in that I grew up in an academic setting. I actually grew up on the Stanford campus and both my parents were on the faculty at Stanford and actually at the medical school. These kids are so impressive because they they haven't always had all those opportunities and yet they've made these commitments to their studies, have identified this area of interest for learning and possible uh, career development. After answering questions that range from the safety of genetically modified foods to the new nutrition labels on restaurant meals, Dr. Hamburg's parting words were a personal prescription for success. Follow your passion. To not try now to define exactly what you're gonna be doing two, three, four decades from now, not to set your heart on one particular thing, but to delve into the opportunities before you. The reaction to Dr. Hamburg's plea to keep options open was immediate, as students, including Bladensburg's newly selected Posse Scholar, sensed its wisdom. I've always aspired to be a pediatrician, so I plan on going to Bucknell and majoring in chemistry or biochemistry, and later on going to medical school, just like Dr. Hamburg, and eventually becoming a pediatrician. As of now, I'm looking into working as an environmental biologist, so who knows, I might possibly end up working at the FDA. This would be the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, the cerebellum, and the hypothalamus would be there. Stirring as the commissioner's words were, the biomedical students hardly need more motivation. In their anatomy class, for example, the identification of body parts on mannequins is intense as would-be health professionals try to raise their stem cell and skeletal IQs. Abdominal, good. What separates your thoracic cavity from your abdominal? Your diaphragm, good. I think that the biomedical program is fantastic just because it allows students so much more access to applicable science. And it's now associated with diseases that they're seeing in their families. It's associated with case studies that they're seeing in the news. They're able to put together bodies like you were seeing in here earlier. Um, so just the hands-on aspect and the real-life applications, I think, is what is really going to make a difference for these kids to be able to pursue it in the future. The students, as they're coming in, we're trying to give them an excitement to become a lifelong learner in anatomy and physiology so that they don't just take a course, but they understand that they're taking a process that's going to deliver them uh, into a career eventually, but they'll be prepared and enjoy the journey along the way. The real world immersion in the biomedical sciences is as hoped, giving students the chance to sample careers along the way, discarding some, reconsidering others. At first, before I even got to class, I was like, okay, pediatrician, well, that looks good. No, I don't want that. Forensics, no, I don't want that. I was like, I can go somewhere with microbiology, I don't want that. To chemistry, I'm taking chemistry right now, I don't want that. I'm, I'm just still looking and I'm still searching and I just keep writing them down and scratching them off to see which one I want and which one would keep me happy. Just as Dr. Hamburg found her healthcare happiness in ways unimagined, so too will James. A doctor in the house, if you will, of his own making. The pressures on me were different because everyone expected, of course, I'd be a doctor with two doctor parents. And so making that final decision to actually go into medical school in some ways was harder because I had to reach deep in and, and determine, is this what I really want to do or is it just what's expected of me? And then, of course, my career path hasn't been that of the typical doctor. When I get in this class, I'm thinking about five years from now, 
10 years from now? Am I gonna be sitting behind a desk? Am I gonna be saving somebody's life? That's what I see. That's when I, when I come to this class, I just gotta remember, cancel like off. This is more than just a grade. This is more than just an A or a B. This is for the rest of my life. For channels 96 and 38, this is Dave Zarek.